Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for June 21st, 2021. What I'm going to report on is that we are currently somewhat trapped between two paradigms. One, a paradigm of geopolitics, neoliberalism, war, regime change, uh, the Green New Deal, collapse of the physical economy, and the other, a potential for a a uh, policy of peaceful cooperation between nations, which would put us into a completely new paradigm. Now, this is especially important given the somewhat surprising results from the summit last week between President Putin and President Biden. But I want you to keep in mind uh, an important commemoration coming up tomorrow. It will be 80 years ago tomorrow that the Nazis launched Operation Barbarossa, the attack against the Soviet Union, which led to some of the bloodiest fighting in world history. Uh, millions killed from the invasion, heroic defense from the uh, Soviet army, uh, ultimately cooperation between the United States and the Soviet Union to defeat the Nazis. But we must keep in mind that these kinds of wars result from exactly the kind of geopolitics which threaten to put the United States in a war today against Russia and or China. So keep that in mind when, when I review the events of the last week and, and where we're headed. I mean, first, most important was the uh, announcement the, in the communique between the two presidents that nuclear war must never be fought and cannot be won. This was a reaffirmation of a statement from the Reagan-Gorbachev summit in 1985 and was important because how many of you were skeptical when the Schiller Institute and Helga Zepp-LaRouche were reporting that we face a danger of nuclear war because of the uh, geopolitical policies of the British Empire towards Russia and China? Well, clearly there was a lot of thinking about this going on in these higher circles. Uh, and there are a number of other aspects to this which give you a sense of what's really going on. The second point is they decided to establish an ongoing uh, strategic stability dialogue to resolve outstanding issues. There's, there's no timetable on this yet, but both sides pledge they're getting ready to prepare for that. Third, over the weekend, Jake Sullivan, the National Security Advisor, announced that the Biden administration will be looking toward a possible summit with Xi Jinping, with hopefully a similar result of easing tensions. And interestingly, Sullivan also said that the United States is looking for a signal from North Korea that there can be a possibility to renew a dialogue with Kim Jong-un. Now, at the same time you see these relatively hopeful signs, what else is coming out of the Biden administration? Well, they're going to continue the sanctions policy. Uh, they, they're continuing to look for a way to shut down Nord Stream 2, even though the decision to ease or to waive the sanctions from one company and its CEO helped pave the way for the, the agreement that was reached in Geneva. They're still talking about enforcing sanctions on Europe. That is, the U.S. and uh, the United Kingdom dictating to Germany and Russia whether or not they can trade. And this is not a very hopeful sign. Similarly, they're talking about new sanctions on the Navalny affair. This is a completely phony operation. The evidence of poisoning of Navalny was never presented to the Russians. Uh, this, is, this came from the German hospital after it, it was reported from Porton Downs, the British chemical weapons facility, which ultimately was responsible for claiming that the Russians tried to poison the defector Skripal. Again, unsubstantiated, no evidence presented, and yet they're moving ahead with new sanctions. Also, they're pushing a global Green New Deal, now called the Build Back Better World. Uh, and what's that for? To counter the Belt and Road Initiative of China with green policy. Not anything to help countries develop, countries that had been afflicted by colonial policy, by the insane conditionalities of the International Monetary Fund on behalf of the Western banks, 
that prevented development and that represent the club that was used quite often for regime change, as pointed out by the book by Perkins, Economic Hitmen. And then finally, they're going to continue the hyperinflation money policy, that is pumping liquidity into to bankrupt entities to try to keep the bubble going longer. At the same time, in the background, they're preparing an austerity drive based on higher interest rates, which will destroy the living standards between the hyperinflation and the austerity, destroy the living standards and the life savings of most of the so-called middle class in the Western world. So what was it that led to the shift in the dialogue at Geneva? I think there were basically two factors. One is a recognition that the United States and its allies are not prepared for war. There was an attempt to push against Russia around Ukraine, going back to Zelensky's March 24th statement that Ukraine will take back Crimea. And as soon as the Russians did a snap mobilization, putting 80 to 100,000 troops on the border, rapidly, without any advance notice, it became clear that there was nothing NATO could do to stop Russia if Russia really wanted to invade Ukraine. That was obvious. But at the same time, the proliferation of war games in, in the Indo-Pacific region has shown American military figures that if China were to launch an attack on Taiwan, there's very little we could do to stop them, so, short of going toward use of nuclear weapons. So these are the two most likely triggers that would trigger a war, and on, in both cases, the probable outcome for the United States and the Allies would be a disaster. Now, secondly, there's losing support for the imperial economic policies. The idea that you can counter the Belt and Road Initiative with carbon offset credits just doesn't fly. How are you going to get African countries and Asian countries to support a policy which basically says, we'll reward you if you don't develop. How is that an infrastructure policy? Well, to tell you the truth, it's not very different than the crazy infrastructure policy being pushed by both Democrats and Republicans for the United States, which essentially is almost no money to inaugurate a program of a modernization of our platforms of infrastructure. At the same time, the crumbling continues as the aged infrastructure is disintegrating in whole parts of the United States. So looking at that and then offering a Green New Deal to African countries, including some that have less than 50% of the population have access to electricity and, and many more lack clean water, it's not a very good selling point. And the idea that the Germans and the French, the Italians, even the Japanese were reluctant to challenge China when China is one of the only economies in the world that's growing and is a major trade partner for those G7 countries, it caused a great deal of debate uh, at the G7 meeting and also at the NATO summit, the military gap between the West and Russia and growing gap between Russia and China. So as a result, the decision was made well, let's be a little more reasonable and see if we can reach some agreements. Now, the problem, or the question is, are we locked into this paradigm of a geopolitical division of the world committed to a, a rules-based order to enforce a unilateral Western power and, and uh, dictatorship, in a sense, defined by imperial neoliberal economic policies? Are we locked into that, or is there a way out? Well, there is an alternative, and that will be the main topic of discussion at this coming weekend's Schiller Institute online conference under the headline, For the Common Good of All People, Not Rules Benefiting the Few. Go to the theschillerinstitute.com, register for this conference, join us in the deliberation, and make sure that as many people as possible have the benefit of seeing the discussion where we will be bringing together leaders from all countries and bringing them together to discuss how do we get out of this paradigm of confrontation and collapse into a new paradigm based on cooperation and mutual economic development. So that's my report for today. 
Uh, be sure to join me tomorrow, share this video, and go to the Schiller Institute.com to register for our conference. Thank you.